All right, traders, Akil Stokes here with TradingPower.com, and welcome to another wonderful weekend review video. Now, I've got a lot in store for you guys today, but I do want to apologize in advance if my energy levels start to dip. Um, I've been on the road all day and literally just got back into the office about maybe 20 minutes or so ago. Uh, so I'm a little tired from that. And also, it's just been one of those weeks in the market. Uh, last week, Jason and I brought in a 4% return on investment pretty easily, um, taking a lot of trades in the process. This week, although it's been a slower week trade-wise, it's, really it's, it's really been a fight just to keep our heads above water, just to stay above that break-even uh, number. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that in today's video and, and kind of the importance of surviving the trades. Um, I'm also going to take a look at a trading opportunity or potential trading opportunity on the pound yen that I showed to my syndicate members last night. And if I have time, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to throw in a nice little rant I have from the live room to give you a little behind the scenes action at what I do on a daily basis um, with my live room members. But before we get into that, I got to I got to show you the intro. I got to put in the disclaimer. So hold tight for uh, a few seconds and I'll be right back for a great weekend review video. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me uh, once again. For all of you guys that are subscribed, the over 6,000 members of you, I appreciate the support. Every time you like a video, every time you subscribe, share, and comment on it, um, it just does a lot for me, so I want to say thank you. It has also come to my attention, uh, one of my traders... Uh, that I work with brought this to my attention this week. I've got a video on here that has almost 10,000 views. And at first when he told me, I didn't believe him. I'm like, no way, no way. Uh, but I looked at it and it's getting pretty close. So, uh, man, I'm just appreciative of that. I never thought I'd get to the level where, you know, 10,000 people would be listening to the words I have to say. It's a little scary, but, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So thank you for that. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, I've got a lot in store for today's video. We're going to start off uh, on the charts. We're going to start off with the pound yen trading opportunity. What I'm going to do is shoot you a flashback video of something I gave my syndicate members last night. And then we're going to look at the current chart and uh, see if we can, uh, I guess, well, not redo our analysis, but add on to our analysis after last night's movement. We had a very good conversation about... Um, well, about trading opportunities and high probability trading opportunities. It looks like the one we identified in the live room that I said wasn't a high probability trading opportunity. It looks like it's a good thing you guys didn't take that or hopefully you didn't. Um, the higher probability opportunity is going to come right here up at the top of this DSR level. That way we can hide stops right above it and really put ourselves at min minimal risk. And that's that's what it's about, guys. As you've seen in the live room or in the in, throughout the trade floor in the syndicate this week, me and Jason have been getting hammered. We've been, you know, we've taken a lot of losses, but we really, we really don't get the, let those losses get out of control. We crunched the numbers today and when we're looking at winning weeks versus losing weeks and on our winning weeks or our profitable weeks, we average about a 3.6% return on investment. On our, our weeks of drawdown, we only average about a negative um, 1.6%. Uh, so when we have those losing weeks and they do come guys, we make that no, uh, you know, we make no lie about it. We're not super traders that never lose a trade. We lose lots of trades, but when those losing weeks do come, you can see we keep the drawdowns very, very small. And that's by just having very smart risk reward levels. So for you guys that are coming through the 12 week transformation, um, that have gotten to the CTS program, this is a perfect time to go down that CTS checklist, that combined technical score checklist and look to build your case for entry. And I'll, I'll put a few things in here for you. Let's start off just by a harmonic move, swing low to swing high, uh, an ABCD pattern, essentially. You can see an ABCD pattern is going to put me right at that level, 181.03. What goes hand in hand with an ABCD pattern? Well, Fibonacci extension, swing low to swing high. And back, you can see we're going to get a 1618 extension right up there. Again, it's not exactly there, but keep in mind, guys, fibs and, and structure zones aren't exact. So, you know, give a little breathing room. As long as they're in that area, it's okay. Now, with patterns, either they got to hit it or they don't hit it. But with structure trading, there is a little freedom involved uh, in there. Uh, we can even take a Fibonacci inversion. And that's going to be the same thing if I do that. So we've got uh, a 1618 Fibonacci extension. 
we've got a harmonic move ABCD pattern right there. If I go ahead and take my Fibonacci retracement tool from my swing high to swing low, I'm going to get a 618 in there. Bang, 618 retracement. Back to the point. Um, we're looking at a high and tight flag pattern right here. We get a flag stick, swing low to swing high right here. And then, you know, lots of bullish momentum. Bulls are, are, are very strongly involved in the market. Again, think a lot of bullying pressure, a lot of buying pressure, buying pressure, buying pressure. And then it, we still go higher, but we start to trickle a little bit. So there's still, uh, think about it this way. There's still buying pressure in the market, but it's starting to slow down. You know, you, you start seeing people start to take profits as we get into that structure zone. Um, you can see a little bit of divergence here on the RSI, not too much, but you can see the RSI slowly trickling lower where price action is slowly trickling up. Now, this is a bearish, bearish sign. Typically in this type of formation, we see this boom, we see a dump off. Um, so we may not ultimately get to that level that uh, I was looking for. We may not get up to that, that one, was it 181 level? We may not get up there or, or, or we just make, we may take a different path. We may retrace back in the previous structure. That looks like another 618 retracement right there. Bang, right into a 618. And we may, you know, we may put in a harmonic move, an ABCD pattern. Right back into that structure level. You know, who I don't, I don't know what the next move is. I, I do think we're going to go up here. Um, how are we going to get there? I, I don't know. You know. We could go straight up. We could go straight down. Um, the point is, it, it doesn't matter that I know or I don't know. What's important is I know that I know how to react for whatever the market does. If the market goes down to list, this level, then I know how I want to buy it up in anticipation of this move. If the market continues to go straight up to this level, then I know how I want to sell it and look for that bearish opportunity. So, all right, so just to give you guys a recap, we're looking at the pound yen four hour chart right now. And the area that we were initially looking for is right up here at the top of our DSR level, right above that 181 even level. And remember I said it, it's, you know, we don't need to find exact zones or exact uh, measurable marks in the market. As long as we can find those and identify those potential reversal zones, that's what's going to be most important. I'm not going to draw all the fib. Well, I will. We'll, we'll take some time to draw the fibs in. We had Fibonacci retracement, if I remember, from swing high up here to swing low. Looking at that 618 Fibonacci retracement. Again, it's a little bit above structure, but that's okay. Again, we're, we're trying to get a, an eye for a potential reversal zone. We had the 618 right there. I believe we had, what, a 1618 from this swing low to this swing high right there. Bang. 1618 in there. And I think that was about it. We had the, um, we had the ABCD pattern completion as well, so let's, let's bring that in. We had our harmonic move again from that same swing low to swing high. We're looking in this area right here. And what I did yesterday on the chart again, we went down to the 60 minute chart and we saw this, um, we saw this high and tight flag pattern. I said, hey, this type of pattern typically breaks out to the downside. Well, what do you know? We broke out to the downside. We went through the if then thought process. If price action breaks out to the downside, then where is it likely to go to? Previous structure lows. We didn't quite get to the tops of these DSR levels. Actually, we did. I take that back. Previous structure lows with lines up with a 618. Fibonacci retracement, swing low to swing high. We didn't quite hit the 618, but we came close. And that's going to be important in a little bit. So the question is, what do we do now? Do we throw all of our initial analysis out the way or do we, you know, do we add on to it? And, and, and the answer is no, we don't, we don't need to throw that initial analysis out the way. Again, we had an idea for you guys looking for that bearish move. We had an idea of where the market wants to go. We just didn't, we don't know the path is going to take to get there. And we could do a few things here. We can add on another Fibonacci extension here from this recent swing low to swing high. Let's see what that gives us. Looks like a 127. Bang, we can get some more Fibonacci confluence up there in the form of a 127 Fibonacci extension. We can take a Fibonacci extension tool and invert it from this swing low back to this uh, previous swing high. That's going to give us a 1618 right at that level. That should also give us a 1414, a little bit lower, right at that uh right at this area right here. And of course, we can take our harmonic, uh, we can look for a harmonic move again, ABCD pattern coming up in that same area. So although the market didn't shoot straight up there, um, 
we can still analyze the recent price movement and just build more uh, more of a case for a reason for entry at that current zone we looked for. You know, now we have one, two, three, four Fibonacci's in the same zone and really two harmonic moves at that same area. So I, I still think that's a pretty good area to look for a shorting opportunity. Of course, I'm not saying just take the short right there. I think it would be unwise to put a limit order right at 81 flat and 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 try to hop on short. Of course, if you're if you're an aggressive trader, I guess you can do that. Um, but it's an area you do want to pay attention to. And if price action gets to that area, then you want to go through your ROEs of how you can enter this trade. Of course, making sure the risk reward works in your favor. Now, if we don't go up, that's how to handle it. If you're looking for a short entry, if you're looking for a long entry, here's what I would do. Again, I mentioned before, very important that we didn't hit the 618 here because, well, that's going to determine what type of pattern we have. If we would have hit that 618 on that retracement, we would have been looking for a Gartley pattern down at the 786 here at 178.88. However, we missed it. Um, so we're going to need to count that as a 50% retracement. And I'm looking for a bat pattern completion down at 178.69. And so I, get, I can hear it already before you guys type in, oh, but Akil, it's, it came so close. It came past the 50% and it almost hit the 618. Shouldn't that be a Gartley? Well, if that's the way you trade it, trade it that way. I, I don't trade it that way. And, I, and I've been pretty successful with advanced patterns um, in the most humblest way, of course. Uh, but my rules are, are, are simple. Um, it's black or white. Either it hits it or it doesn't hit it. If it hits the 618, I'm looking for Gartley. If it comes one tick or one pip away from the 618, then does it hit it? No, I'm looking for a bat pattern. That's that's how I trade these patterns. Um, I, you guys can do it however you want, but I don't want to leave any discretion. And I don't want to, oh, close enough, maybe, almost. I don't want any of that stuff as far as it, my advanced pattern goes. Either it did or it didn't. So for you guys that are looking for some bull action right here, again, we have a bat pattern down at our 886. If I drag my uh, horizontal line down here to uh, 7870s, you'll see that if I look left, structurally use clues, this bat pattern is going to line up right with our previous, oh, right with our, what am I doing here? Why is, why is my, I don't know what I'm doing. I think I broke something, but we're going to line up right with our, uh, <laughs> that is kind of weird. Hold on. There we go. Get rid of that ghost on my screen. <laughs> right at our, that, uh, uh, now I'm out of my OODA loop. All right, this, uh, our, our horizontal line here is gonna line up right with our previous flag pattern structure. Again, look left, uh, look left structure leave clues. And of course, if I look a little bit more left, you can see we hit structure as well right here. So not a bad area to look for a long opportunity. Looks like we may be close to a 3D2 and a 50% as well. Um, not that it matters, but I like seeing how close I am to these things. Uh, a little bit off from that 3D2, but I bet we're going to hit this 50%. Yep, right on that 50%. So bat pattern completion there. And of course, if you're a trader that trades maybe on the 15 minute time frame, um, you're looking at another potential bat inside here as well. I'm not going to dig too deep into that. Many of you guys watching this video aren't going to watch this until Friday or, or um you know, are looking for longer term trade. So I figured I'd show you the bigger entry. But for you day traders, this is something definitely to look for um, during the London Open uh, to see if you get filled and we can get some movement during London or maybe the first half of New York. So again, a little bit of movement happened on pound yen. But when we stick with that initial analysis, it, it makes it easy just to pick up on what the market's done. We don't have to redo everything. We can keep our same uh, predictions and keep those same projections. Uh, you know, if anything, we can add, we can uh, add more to our case, add more to our reason for entry, and maybe even find some hidden patterns or whatnot in the process of doing that. So earlier in the video, I talked about how it's been sort of a rough week for Jason and I. Maybe rough week isn't the right word. We haven't really got hammered by the market. It's just been a really big fight. And, you know, in my opinion, these are the best type of weeks. I have a lot of new clients that are coming in through my training course. We have a lot of new clients in the syndicate as well, taking advantage of that $1 deal we offered. And, well, I think the worst thing that can happen to a trader is they come into something new and they immediately see success because they expect it. They expect it to be easy. If you sign up and the first thing you see is, you know, making a million pips, you're like, oh, man, this is so easy. This is this is what I expect to happen every week. And that's just not the truth. Uh, we say this time and time again. Trading is a grind, and this has really been an example this week of going back and forth, punching the market, getting punched, and, and really battling just to keep our head afloat. 
And a great example, I love doing this, and, and you guys have, have gave me compliments on this in the past, um, is showing you guys the equity curve. So what I'm going to do is walk you through all of the trades that Jason and I took this week, and I want you to pay attention to what it looks like on the equity curve and uh, you know how it really is uh, you know, basically consolidation in the market. So we started things off with a 41 pip winner uh, and a 96 pip winner. So we, we, came, we started off with a good start to the week, and then we took some drawdowns. We took a loss of minus 27 or 26. We took a loss of minus 20, uh, 27. Came back with plus 92. And then boom, another big loser, minus 73, minus 24, minus 50. A big streak of lo uh, losers. Three trades in a row that put us in the drawdown, taking back essentially all of the profits we made so far. Then we put in some chop. We put in a 12 pip winner, a four pip winner, a nine pip winner, and a five pip winner. Um, these ended up being very important. I'm going to tell you guys why later. Uh, and then we we blew that. We, we took a 48 pip loss and we're right back down to where we started. Um, but luckily, we stuck with the plan. We continued to follow the system. We didn't let uh, our emotions our our fear or any negative type attitude take control. And we pulled it back together. Plus 35, plus 66, um, and then minus 77. So you see, it's been an up and down week. Uh, basically, the same amount of wins as losses. Uh, but I mentioned earlier, the the most important part of this trading week was that streak of trades where you saw 12, 4, 9, and 5. And it seems like nothing. Well, Keel, why is 30 pips so important? It, it's, these are just small winners. Who cares about 12 pips? Who cares about 4 pips? Who cares about 9 pips, 5 pips? It, you know, what difference does that make? I'll tell you this. At that point, we were coming off a three-trade losing streak, Right. We had lost 73, 24, and 50. So we had lost almost 150 pips in the market. Um, on Wednesday, we came in a live room and we saw four cipher patterns uh, that met our reason for entry and we had to take them. Now, immediately, this here's what happened. Keep in mind, we're coming off a three trade losing streak. Immediately, all four of those ciphers went against us. And just imagine what you're thinking as a trader. Oh, no, here it goes. I'm going to lose seven in a row. Ah oh, man, it broke the it broke the X leg. It's it, it's invalid. This one, I know this one's gonna be a loser. Ah, oh, here it goes. I'm blowing the account. And just think about all the emotional um, tugs that are happening to you, and how easy it is to make a mistake. And I'll tell you what, most traders in that situation just click that button. They give up. They say, you know what? It's whatever. Boom. Just stop myself out. I'm going flat. I'm done for the week. Right. Some of you guys out there, oh, if I lose three trades in one day, I stop trading for the month, which I think is a stupid rule. I'm not calling you stupid. I just think it's a stupid rule. And you, you probably read about it somewhere on a, a stupid Internet site. Again, pardon my language, but it, it, you know, that type of stuff gets me really heated. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, but anyway, the point is what we did in the room was fantastic because we looked at those four trades, right? Looked at those four trades. While they were in drawdown, and we could have potentially lost about another uh, 100 pips on those four trades, but we did not make a mistake. We stuck with it. We stuck to the plan. We didn't let any emotions take control, and all four of those trades came back. Now, they didn't come back to make a lot of pippage. You know, again, only 30 pips between the two of them, or between the, uh, the four of them, but take a look at our equity curve. Look, look what would have happened if we would have just closed out at market once they were down at the X leg. This 12 pips would have turned to minus 20, another minus 20, another minus 20, and another minus 20. And instead of being up a little bit going into Friday, we're sitting down, what, 75 pips now. You see, it's, it's a big turnaround. It may not seem like much at the time, but those little winners, you know, dare I say, those were the best winners all week. It allowed us to stay afloat. And more importantly, it, it gave traders the belief that if I stick to the plan, if I trust my back testing, if I if I trust all the work I put on uh, on the psychological side, um, that this stuff works. And once you start to believe that and really see it in real life, not me telling it to you, once you start to really see it, um, it just it, it can be a turning point in your trading. So I thought it was really important to mention that. Um, so I don't know how much time I got left on this video. I don't want to run too long, but um, I do want to share you guys this. It was a behind the scenes uh, 
behind the scene look at the live room from last Friday. And, and one of my 12 week transformation members, uh, a guy that's in his 12th week right now. So he's, he's, he's been through the course. He's, he's right at that point where he's ready to go out on his own. He's really starting to put everything together and develop himself as a trader. And, you know, in the course, I, I don't want to make this a, a, uh, what's it called? I don't want to make this a, a thing about my course, but you know, my trading philosophy is this. I don't want you guys to be just like me. I believe that trading should be specific to each individual. All of us have, you know, a different philosophy. All of us have kind of a, just different behaviors. And we want to, we want to adjust our and adapt our trading to us personally. And uh, so what I do is I teach a set of skills and I teach them specifically at first, but then as you go on, as you get in the later weeks of the course, you learn how to take each of those skills and really work it into your own type of strategy. And, and it was a great example of, of one of the veterans, one of the veteran traders in my course who got to that point, was able to put everything he learned together and really execute a fantastic trade. So I do want to share this, uh, this brief video with you. I'll, I'll cut it down so it's short. Um, but take a look at it as I, I think it's a it's a, a valuable learning experience from someone else, not myself. There's nothing but opportunity, right? Am I right? There, there's nothing until 120. Really, it's 119. We're going to give 120 because it's a better looking even handle number, right? There's nothing but opportunity. So you should be thinking short, 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 short. Now, we haven't had any opportunities on the swing trading time frames. We just haven't had a big retracement. We had small retracements, but probably nothing enough to get an entry reason. And we got someone, a trader just like yourself, a trader that started off in the same shoes as many of you are right now, week one, looking for help, looking to invest in himself and become a better trader. Someone that went through the first couple of weeks, and he'll, he'll let you know, someone that went through the first couple of weeks and struggled, wanted to do everything at once. It had to constantly deal with me saying, hey, Danny, how about you finish module one first? How about you concentrate on structure? How about you leave patterns alone? How about you don't trade that? And it was a battle. But once he got into the groove of things, he said, you know what? Let me take this step by step. Let me learn about structure. I, I, I do want to trade patterns. I, I, I do want to make some quick money, right? But let me learn this stuff. And we got a guy now that shoots me a message saying, hey, Kiel, remember how we talked about that, uh, that dollar cad and how we should look for a shorting opportunity? Well, let me know. Does this look like a, a valid 2618 to you? And I said, yeah. And someone that in his mind measured it out said, you know what? I am more than willing to risk 15 pips for a chance to gain. What'd you say? You're up, you're up 120 right now, Danny. And he's been scaling his position out. He hasn't, you know, he's not holding the whole thing. He's not, not stupid. But he's been scaling his position out. But how many of you guys would kill? And I'll draw this on one more time. How many of you guys would kill to get a risk reward that looks like this? Target one's right down here. Target two's right down, st still trailing. Target two's right down here, probably. One. I don't know where he's shooting for ultimately, but I would guess structure. Right? Would you guys kill for this? Give me a yes if that's true. Looking at risking 17. Ooh. For a potential gain of 200. Guess what, guys? This, this, this wasn't an advanced pattern. It wasn't anything fancy. It wasn't anything that you think you need to do right away. This was, uh, this was no different than knowing how to read price action, knowing a simple technique like the 2618 trade, doing his IPDE, identify, predict, decide, execute, doing his higher time frame analysis, going through his trading routine, trading the right size portfolio, having a good feel for what dollar cad has been doing, getting inside the market's OODA loop and then being man enough to pull the trigger when the opportunity came. Cause I guarantee some of you out there would have saw this and not pulled the trigger. I guarantee some of you guys would have saw this and be like, Oh man, that looks good. And never would have taken the trade. That's what separates professional traders 
from those traders that get crapped out, out of the markets in, uh, what, 120 days? That's the difference. He's up 120 pips. No, correction, he's bagged 120 pips already. You don't need to do this every day. You just need to take advantage of the opportunities that come, guys, and it, it could be great. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this week's weekend review video. If so, do me a favor, leave me a comment um, or hit that like button and share it with a friend. Don't hog this information for yourself. And uh, well, also, if you're one of those traders that that feels like they're stuck, um, they're you know they've got trading down, but there, there's something missing. You're doing something wrong. You're not quite sure what it is. Um, do me a favor, or do yourself a favor. Go over to our website www.tradeempower.com and fill out that free trade assessment. Uh, one of our traders reviews that on a daily basis. We get a lot of them in, so you got to give them some time to uh, to check it out. But uh, fill it out, and we'll definitely try to figure out you know what that missing link is uh, in your trading. What is stopping you from seeing consistent uh, profitability? So um, also, if you're on here, uh, I, didn't, I didn't go over a lot of the stats, uh, the finishing stats for this week. Uh, we have one more trading day left. But if you go out, if you go down to ideas from the trading blog, you can read, uh, you know, all the stuff I post. Looks like George uh, posted something today on gold. You can see I have a, a trading recap from Wednesday's day. And, um, you know, just check it out. There's a lot of free information on this site, a lot of free content. Um, so uh, also if you guys are interested in the trading course, again, I mentioned the 12 week transformation. I, I don't like pitching it too much, but just shoot me an email if, if you want to, if you have questions about it, uh, you can view it on our products and services part, but you know, just shoot an email to Akil at tradingpower.com and I'll, I'll be sure to answer any questions you have about it. So that's it for this week, gang. I'm going to catch some sleep. Uh, maybe try and watch some NBA playoffs, but most likely sleep. I will see you guys in the live room and the syndicate tomorrow. And for the rest of you, I will see you next week with another weekend review video. Until then, plan your trade, trade your plan. Best of luck in the markets this week.